So this is one story, strange story of Tamim al-Dari. Tamim al-Dari came to the Rasul and narrated a story. Ya Rasulullah, I was in a ship and the ocean started to become rough. And they stirred the other people with me. And the waves, you know, bashed us from pillar to post for a whole month. You know, it's tossing us between waves. And after a month, the waves subsided. And we reached near an island. And we anchored the ship and took a little boat and came to the island. At the brink of the island, we saw a creature, the strangest we have seen, covered in hair to the extent that we couldn't tell its front from its behind. So they said, Whoa, we on to you. What are you? So he said, I am Jasasa. So they are hesitant and they say, We thought he's like a devil. Jasasa said, There's a person in that monastery who is longing to see you, go to him. So they went. And Tamim Adari says, And suddenly we saw in front of us a person, a man who was the biggest in build that we have yet to have seen. His arms were wrapped to his neck with chains. And his head and arms were also chained together to his knees, to his legs. And he's chained up really well. We said, what are you? And he said, you are able to hurt me because I'm chained up. So it's my right to ask who are you first so I can ensure my safety. They said, very well. We are people from the Arabs. We rode, we set sail in our ship and a storm hit us until we became lost and landed on this island. And it led us to you. They said, we got afraid of this man and we, did, we didn't feel safe around him. However, the man said to us, Tell me about the palm trees of Baysan. Baysan is a city in Jordan. And he wanted to know whether there were palm trees planted in there a lot. We said, what do you exactly want to know about Baysan in Jordan? He said, I ask you, are there more palm trees and have they be filled with dates or not yet? They said, yes, it is full of palm trees and full of dates. He said, soon its palm trees and dates will become scarce. Today, really, in Jordan... Dates are scarce now. It used to be in history, abundance. Now listen. He said, now explain to me about Buhayr al-Tabariya. They said, what do you want to know about it? He said, does it have water in it? He said, they said, yes, there is lots of water. He said, soon its water is going to go away. And truly today, the water has gone drier than before. Now I'm going to tell you about myself. I am the Dajjal. Soon I will be given permission to come out of here I will be released and I will traverse the earth from its corner to its corner not leaving a city or a village behind and I will roam it for 40 days a day like a year and so on and so forth and I will go to every city except for Mecca and Tayyibah so the Rasul at this time narrating the story hit his member like this he goes, Tayyiba, Tayyiba, this is Tayyiba, Medina is Tayyiba. Ad Dajjal is somewhere in one of, near the oceans, in one of the, the, on an island in one of the oceans of Asham. That's where Dajjal is right now, which some scholars say Ad Dajjal is now living. In another hadith, it describes how he'll, he will be released, as in the Dajjal will become angry somehow, and he will rip the chains off, Wallahu A'lam, and then he will be released. And the Muslims are under the leadership of Imam al-Mahdi. And understand, they don't have the capacity to overcome this challenge. So Muslims are constantly on the back foot until they are locked up and surrounded. In one narration says Baytul Maqdis, they are there and they are surrounded. And the Dajjal and his army is outside. And the siege lasts. The fear is immense. Man will tie their wives and their mothers and sisters out of fear that they will run to the Dajjal and fall victim to it. Even in Medina al munawwara when he is camped outside Medina, three earthquakes will hit the city. Everyone will think, oh my God, and run out of the city. So the Prophet said, Allah will purify the city of its hypocrites. And only the true believers will remain. So now the Dajjal after that comes to Baytul Maqdis. And the Imam is there, and the Muslims are there, and they're trying to put up a resistance. At this point, when they are inside this encampment, 
Allah Rabbul Izzah sends them their solution. And the solution of the Dajjal is Masih, Isa alayhi salam. So listen to, and I will rush through this. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam says, Isa, the son of Mary, will descend. How will he descend, Ya Rasul? His hand will be on the wings of two angels. He will be covered in two garbs, both tinged slightly yellow. Next to the white minaret at the eastern side of Damascus. And subhanallah, at the eastern door of Damascus, there is a white minaret. And there is the other one of the Umawi mosque. Both white minarets, they didn't exist at the time of the Rasul. But now it is there. So Isa will come down in that, in that place. Then he will make his way towards Baytul Maqdis. And the Ahadith say, the Muslims at this stage are thinking what to do. So eventually they come to this consensus. Listen, we can't sit here forever. Let's get out and meet them face to face. So they make this decision at night that tomorrow we will open the doors and go and take the sun head on. Fajr comes and the adhan is given and the lines stand up and iqama is given. And then subhan al-khaliq, the day or the area goes dark. And the hadith says, so that a man cannot see his hand. It will go dark. And then when light comes back, they see in Isa is amidst them. And he comes to the Salat of Fajr. And the Prophet says, what will be your situation when Isa, the son of Mary, comes amidst you and your Imam is amidst you? So listen, the Iqama is given and he notices that Isa alayhi salam comes. So he says, come, lead us in Salah. So in one qawl, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam says, Isa alayhi salam will put his hand between the shoulders of the Mahdi and say, this is the honor that Allah Rabbul Izza has given this nation. You will lead each other. So Isa will lead behind, I mean, will pray behind the Mahdi for this Salah. And then when the Salah is finished Isa, and the people are ready, do you understand they were ready before Isa now for this challenge? That is why when you reach a level, Allah Rabbul Izza will give you its solution. So he says, open the doors. So the doors open. And from afar, the Dajjal sees Isa alayhi salam. The false Messiah sees the real Messiah. And the Hadith says he starts to melt like salt and water. And he runs and Isa alayhi salam chases him. And calling, he says, it is written that I owe you one strike. I owe you one hit and that will come. So he catches him in the Babil Lud in Palestine and in that place in one narration with a lance and another one with a sword Isa alayhi salam will strike and show the blood of the Dajjal in his sword and the hadith says had he were not to strike the man would have melted to death and the Dajjal and the battle with the Dajjal will be finished and the Muslims have gone through a colossal test and Isa alayhi salam will come to them and rub their faces out of mercy and kindness and give them the bushara. This is your place in Jannah. This is your place in Jannah.